One of the world's most ambitious construction projects is rising in the middle of a desert. The Gulf Cooperation Council, consisting of six of the Middle East's wealthiest countries, is building a railway over 2,000 kilometers long to better connect the region. This project faces immense challenges, from crossing desert sands to tunneling through mountains, and comes with a hefty price tag. The railway could unite the Gulf, reshape its transportation sector, reduce its carbon footprint, and spark a new era of economic development. But first, it must overcome political, financial, and logistical hurdles. Before diving into how this railway is being built, it's crucial to understand why it's being built in the first place. We are committed to releasing two videos a week. Like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more visionary builds. Let's start in February 1981 in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Leaders from Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Bahrain, and Oman gathered to form the Gulf Cooperation Council, GCC, a political and economic alliance. Their economies have thrived on oil and gas, making them heavily dependent on the oil market. During the Great Recession of 2008 and 2009, oil prices plummeted and the GCC economy suffered. This is where the railway comes in. In 2009, the GCC approved a massive railway project to link all six member states. The cost of this ambitious venture would be shared among the countries, with the entire project estimated to be between $100 and $250 billion. The goal was to diversify the Gulf states' economies away from their heavily reliance on oil and gas, which could help them build stronger, more resilient economies. The railway project aims to connect the nation's ports with manufacturing hubs in urban centers, creating a cohesive and efficient transportation network. This connectivity is expected to spur economic growth by facilitating trade, improving logistics, and enhancing accessibility within the region. A key component of the network is the Etihad Railway, an $11 billion, 1,200-kilometer freight and passenger railway stretching across the Emirates from the Gulf of Oman to the Persian Gulf. The railway is designed to play a crucial role in linking various parts of the UAE, enhancing both freight and passenger transport. The railway project is not just about transportation. It represents a strategic move to foster economic development and reduce the region's dependency on oil revenues. By connecting ports, manufacturing hubs, and urban centers, the GCC countries aim to create a robust infrastructure that supports industrial growth and economic diversification. Overcoming the immense challenges of building this railway from navigating the desert sands to tunneling through mountains will require significant financial investment and political cooperation. However, the potential benefits are substantial. The railway could unite the Gulf, reshape its transportation sector, reduce its carbon footprint, and kickstart a new era of economic development. The UAE's first national rail network is being built in two stages. The first stage, completed in 2016, covers 264 kilometers, connecting the Habshan and Shah areas in Abu Dhabi to the port of Ruiz. Working in this environment is tough, to say the least. During the summer, the heat can be so intense that some construction sites operate at night when temperatures drop to around 30 degrees Celsius. Sand presents another major challenge as it creates difficult shifting terrain. Etihad Rail has learned from other countries that have built in desert conditions, such as China, Saudi Arabia, and Mauritania. These nations have developed solutions like converting sand dunes to clay over many years, monitoring shifting dunes, and planting walls of vegetation to block wind and sand. To address the unique challenges of the desert, Etihad Rail's locomotives are equipped with a sand filtration system and a sand plow. These features help mitigate the impact of sand on the railway's operations, ensuring that trains can run smoothly even in the harsh desert environment. The second stage of the project is currently underway, aiming to extend the network and further enhance connectivity across the UAE. This stage will significantly increase the reach and capacity of the rail system, supporting the broader goals of economic diversification and regional integration. In Stage 1, Etihad Rail constructed 20 overbridges, 2 underbridges, 10 road underpasses, and 18 smaller underpasses for future use. The company also built two factories to produce concrete railway sleepers from locally sourced raw materials. Each sleeper is 2.6 meters long and weighs 340 kg attached to the main rails with a fastening system to stabilize the track and ensure smooth travel speeds of up to 200 km per hour for passenger trains. While this first route isn't transporting passengers yet, it carries up to 22,000 tons of granulated sulfur across 110 wagons daily. The sulfur is extracted from the fields in Abu Dhabi and processed for export at the port of Ruai.
where it is used to manufacture products ranging from batteries to fertilizers and fireworks. As of mid-2021, Etihad Rail has transported more than 30 million tons of granulated sulfur for the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company. A single train journey reduces carbon dioxide emissions by 70 to 80 percent compared to truck transport. This is significant for an economy with one of the highest carbon footprints in the world. This efficiency has also made the Emirates the world's top exporter of sulfur, bringing in $679 million in 2019. Much of that sulfur likely went to China, the world's largest importer of the element, which is also involved in Stage 2 of the project. Stage 2 construction began in 2020 and aims to extend the network by 605 kilometers, from Guifat on the Saudi Arabia border to Fujairah on the east coast. A $408.4 million contract was awarded to the China State Construction Engineering Corporation and South Korea's SK Engineering and Construction to design and build 139 kilometers of rail line. Once complete, the network will link the country's major industrial ports and trading centers, enabling the transport of more than 50 million tons of goods annually. This expansion is not only about improving transport logistics, but also about unlocking the potential for other natural resource developments in Saudi Arabia and the UAE, such as iron ore, gold, aluminum, and silver. A strong railway infrastructure would help these governments tap into these untapped natural resources, boosting their economies further. Professor Amory noted that such infrastructure is crucial for accessing and exploiting these resources efficiently. The project is set to transform the transportation landscape of the region, fostering economic growth and reducing dependency on oil and gas. By creating a robust and integrated rail network, the UAE and its neighbors are paving the way for a more diversified and sustainable economic future. Despite progress on the Etihad rail network, the broader GCC rail project has faced several hurdles. At one point, GCC countries temporarily excluded Qatar from the organization, casting doubt on its participation in the railway project. Moreover, the pandemic and fluctuating oil prices have caused logistical delays and led to cuts in infrastructure spending, pushing the project's completion date back by several years. Initially, the vision of Gulf leaders was marked by high ambition, sometimes bordering on unrealistic. Over time, this vision has shifted to a more pragmatic approach, focusing on achievable goals and practical solutions. This evolution reflects a growing recognition of the need to balance ambition with feasibility. Etihad Rail has not yet specified when the railway will be ready for commuters, but even when it is, there may be challenges in encouraging its use. In a country where cars are deeply ingrained in the culture, shifting public preference might take time. A 2020 survey by Road Safety UAE found that 83% of respondents rely on cars, while only 13% use public transportation. This indicates that promoting the railway as a viable alternative will require a significant cultural shift. Technological advancements can happen rapidly, but changing cultural habits? That takes longer. The railway project, while technologically advanced, will need to be accompanied by efforts to shift public perception and behavior towards sustainable transportation options. The potential benefits of the railway project are substantial. It promises to enhance connectivity across the Gulf, boost economic growth, and reduce the region's carbon footprint. As the network expands and becomes operational, it could gradually influence public attitudes, encouraging more people to embrace rail travel over car usage. This shift would contribute to long-term economic and environmental sustainability, aligning with the broader goals of diversifying economies and improving infrastructure in the GCC region. The construction of the railway network, especially projects like Etihad Rail, represents a crucial step towards these goals. Stage 2, which began in 2020, aims to extend the network by 605 kilometers, connecting key industrial ports and trading centers across the UAE. This stage involves significant international collaboration, with a $408.4 million contract awarded to China State Construction Engineering Corporation and South Korea's SK Engineering and Construction for the design and construction of 139 kilometers of rail line. The challenges of building in the harsh desert environment from extreme heat to shifting sands are being met with innovative solutions and lessons learned from other countries with similar conditions. These efforts underscore the determination of the Gulf states to realize their vision of a connected, diversified, and sustainable future. The project's success will depend not only on overcoming these physical and logistical challenges, but also on fostering a cultural shift towards embracing public transportation. As the railway network continues to develop, it holds the promise of transforming the transportation landscape of the Gulf, paving the way for a more interconnected and resilient region. Still, the railway is a significant part of the Gulf nation's plans to become more sustainable and diversify their economies. This project has sparked a new industry, creating numerous job opportunities. Both Saudi Arabia and the UAE have developed rail studies training programs to support this growing sector. 
The Gulf economies have seen exponential growth over the last three decades, and the development of railway lines is a logistical extension of this immense economic expansion. The Emirates, known for its oil wealth and futuristic development, is using the Etihad Railway project to showcase a long-term strategy aimed at building a more connected and unified Gulf region. While the glitzy skyscrapers and luxurious lifestyles often dominate perceptions of the Gulf, the railway project highlights a commitment to sustainability and economic diversification. It reflects a broader vision to reduce dependence on oil and promote a more resilient and interconnected regional economy. The Etihad Railway, along with the broader GCC Rail Project, is poised to transform transportation across the Gulf. By improving connectivity between major industrial ports, trading centers, and urban areas, the railway will facilitate trade, enhance logistics, and promote economic growth. This infrastructure investment is also expected to produce carbon emissions, aligning with global sustainability goals. We are committed to releasing two videos a week. Like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more visionary builds.